Hi guys, my name is Tatiana Ryszkova and I welcome you at Ask Tatiana. Today I would like to show you how we can memorize better so we are able to play the pieces for a long time without any blackouts and also to perform them very successfully. When we learn a piece of music, we usually uh, use five types of memory. The first one, muscle memory. Second, audio memory. Then we have visual memory. Then we have intellectual memory. And then we have emotional memory. Last two you will see a bit later. Um, to be able to memorize the piece really, really good and secure, it's good to combine and to use as many types of memory as possible. The best way to use all five of them. What happens if you don't know about that, uh, if you don't know how to work with them, then usually we use muscle memory. That is something that happens automatically. As longer you play the piece, as better your fingers know what to do. And sometimes come either audio or visual uh, memory, sometimes maybe two of them. But it becomes really difficult with intellectual and emotional memory. Today I will show you how you can practice each of these five types and how you can succeed with it. So let's start. The first and very common one, muscle memory. It's the memory of your fingers. And um, to answer the question how to develop it, we have a very simple answer. Through many repetitions. As more you repeat the piece, as better your fingers will learn and memorize it. But, a big but, be very careful. You memorize, your muscles memorize not only the good repetitions, they memorize everything. It means also mistakes. So, just repeating the piece somehow you memorize everything how you do it. So be sure that you will really profit from this memory. Take care that your petitions don't include any mistakes. But if you notice that you are not able to play without mistakes, please slow down the piece so you get control over everything and you can use your petitions for a successful progression. Another point that helps you to develop your muscle memory is playing blind. You have your guitar, you close the eyes and you start to play the piece or particular part that you want to learn. When you close your eyes, you switch off the eyes, so to say, and your other senses become very sharp, very intensive. It means you can hear much better and you feel much more intensive. So working in that way you can focus concentration on the muscles, on the finger movements and it makes it very intensive and very effective as an exercise. So we go to the next kind type of memory and it is audio memory. That is if you remember how the music sounds or if you remember very well the melody. Let's take a look how we can practice it. First point, listening to recordings. A great tool to activate your audio memory. Um, if you have a new piece that you want to learn, um, try to listen as many recordings possible. Also, when you play it uh, by yourself, pay attention to the music, hear exactly which voices do you have, how sound the bass, how sound the harmony. Um, what kind of melody do you have here? Is there anything specific, special um, that is very interesting? So pay um, very active attention on the sound. Singing the melody also a great way to uh, intense uh, your audio memory. It's also good if you not only sing the melody, but you can sing the bass, you can sing the middle voice. Actually whatever you want and um, one important thing actually it doesn't matter if you're a professional singer or not uh, for being able to practice in that way 
you don't need to have a great voice, you even don't really need to be able to sing it absolutely clean. You can do it as you can and it will also have a great effect on your audio memory. We have one more point, blind playing. That is what I mentioned already before, when you close your eyes, this time you concentrate yourself on the sound. No? And it becomes very really interesting experience. I can encourage you to try it out. It's really, really different when you play with open eyes. And in this way you sharp your audio and muscle um, impressions. We continue and go now to visual memory. It's everything what you memorize with your eyes, so to say. I um, usually separate it in two ways. Either we can memorize the fingers and finger movements, or we can also memorize the uh, scores or the taps. I know that some people, when they actively memorize the piece, after, you, after they can do it and they looked in the scores, uh, then they turn the hand away and they can see um, in the head, just in the imagination, they see the piece of paper and they can follow it just um, mentally. And other people uh, can memorize very easily their fingers, uh, the position of the fingers, uh, the general position on the fretboard, the shape of the chords and all these things. Let's take a look how we can practice it, how we can develop that. Looking in this chorus on the fingers, something very obvious, uh, <laughs> obvious, but if you just look and in this chorus and you think about what will be in the TV today, that will not be a great practicing for your memory. But if you look in this chorus or on the fingers and you pay attention at what you see, yeah, you are stay very conscious and very concentrated on the picture that you see, then that will be a great help. Another point, memorize shapes and pictures. That is something that um, concerns probably more left hand, if you are right hand guitarist. Um, some of the chords, maybe you have already noted, they have some particular shapes or you can compare it with the shapes. Some of the chords look more like circle, some of them looks more like triangle, uh, some of them look really crazy. And that is also could be in the name of the shape, this crazy chord. Uh, so putting a particular labels on the chords, um, you can easily remember them because they become special. Now they become different and it uh, always uh, leads your attention to this chord. Concerning pictures, that could be something like, um, for example, when you learn a particular part of the piece or, I don't know, maybe measure to measures or when you play a particular mood from the piece, um, maybe you used to look on a specific um, thing in your room or outside, maybe you see a particular tree when you practice it or you, you, you have a special um, music stand that you're looking at when you play it. Um, combining this picture with the music that you play in the current moment also activates your memory and uh, makes it more stable. And here we are already close to look for associations. As I said, shapes, pictures, maybe also from the sound, maybe you can um, have an association with um, with particular sound from the nature, or maybe it sounds like the, like the voice of your neighbor, or whatever else. As more additional impulses you can include in your memory, as better it will work. What do we have else? Mental practicing, also great technique to develop your visual memory, very good. Um, it's for example 
great to do when you go uh, to sleep or when you wake up or if you fly or drive somewhere you don't have instrument and the score is in the near if you just imagine in your head that you would play this piece how you would play it. and you particularly start to play this piece in your head in this way you hear the music that you play maybe you will see your left hand fingers maybe you will see your right hand fingers doing that and uh, this technique is also great to figure out the particular danger spots in the piece. When you worked well on the piece and you have the opinion that I can play it, I memorize it and I perform it very well, I'm sure, prove with this mental technique if everything is really clear, you will notice if the parts of the piece or the chords or particular notes that you are not able to reproduce just in your head by mental practicing, they will be the potential spots for your blackout. That shouldn't happen necessarily today, that could happen in two weeks or at next performance, but um, these are their, their markers, so you need to check this part again. And last in this point, but not least, working with short parts, two to four measures. That um, actually that concern not only visual memory, but also all other kinds of memory. When you want to memorize it really effective and not just passive, you need to work with small parts. Take one measure, take two measures, but don't do complete piece. That makes a great difference. And now we go to my two favorite kinds of memory, to the intellectual and emotional. So here we are. In my opinion, intellectual and emotional memories, they work like some kind of a glue or um, stabilizers for the full construct of memory. Of course, you can exist without them, but you have much higher chances that everything will fall apart and they both will glue everything together and keep it very stable. Let's take a closer look. What I mean when I say intellectual memory? Intellectual memory for me, it's the uh, memory that works when we know exactly what happens in this concrete moment. We don't feel it, we don't hear it, we don't see it, we know it. So let's take a look how we can practice it, how we can activate the intellectual memory. In my opinion, you need to answer on three W's. What is it? What? Where? And why? Let's figure out what does it mean concrete. The answer on the question what for your intellectual memory would be which finger or which note you play. So what finger or note you memorize. For example, I take my first finger or I play the note C, for example. The next question, where? Where do you do it? On which fret, on which string, or in which bar in this chorus it takes place. So we take different coordinates and start to bring them together. We have now, for example, first finger on the first fret on the B string in the bar 22, for example. And the last but not least question, why? Why do I have this first finger on the note C on the first fret and so far? Why? Is it my melody note? Or maybe it's a bass? Or maybe accompaniment? Or which function it has? Does this note lead to something else? Or maybe if it's a accompaniment, maybe it fills any space. Expression. Which expression that adds? If we talk, for example, about the bass, if we would have, 
for example, node C on the third thread, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the basics are sometimes there to add more drama. Or, for example, if we talk about the high E on the 12th fret on the E string, that might be kind of a, I don't know, maybe bells are ringing. Now we're talking about expressions, uh, feelings, pictures, something that you cannot touch but that will be memorized really well in your head. And also another point for some of you, for those of you who are love to um, think about harmonies, music theory, which to which harmony does it belong? Is it major, minor, seven, whatever else? If it helps you, great, memorize it in that way. As soon as you bring all these informations together, our brain starts to work and there is something that is absolutely great because the working brain is a very nice one. So you will not have a possibility to get distracted, to think about this stupid guy in the fifth row uh, who looks somehow, somehow strange to you. Um, and in that way you will be able to go through the piece without any blackouts. The next point emotional memory. Um, I talked about that in another episode that um, each day we have many many informations, a lot of information that comes to us and our brain cannot keep everything. It should somehow to sort it and to see what will be forgotten and what I need to keep. And there are many different uh, ways how this sorting happens, but one of the filters that makes sense is some kind of emotional filter. If any um, experience or something that you do, um, or any news, if it has a particular emotion, then it's more valuable for our brain than something that doesn't it's not connected with any emotion at all. And as stronger your emotion is, as more important, more valuable it is for our brain. So we can use it great in the learning process and we include emotions in the memorization. How we do it? For example, make emotions map. Each piece you can construct like some kind of a map or like a story. You know, for example, this part would sound more gentle and that part you have more drama, you play louder and this kind of things. It's great if you have it somewhere fixed so you know exactly how these emotions will develop and what comes afterward. Another point, connect the piece with your personal life experience. This is one of the strongest anchors that keeps this particular piece or spot of the piece in your memory. It works really, really well. It's the strongest glue. Uh, maybe you had a particular experience in your life that was very emotional. I have, for example, um, connection when I practiced Bach, particular prelude of Bach, um, I, um, I had news that my, uh, that my grandma died and of course it was very strong emotion in me and uh, practicing and working on this particular prelude I thinking always about her and it's a big big anchor and I know that that place will not disappear out of my memory because um, it's very, very emotional. Uh, that shouldn't be such uh, extreme experiences in your life. That could be also any other, the main thing that it is filled with emotion. And last but not least, create a story. You can make the piece of music like a story or like a film. Uh, fantasy. Feel free to tell us something interesting 
it might be any detective or comedy or whatever else feel free to use it and you will see how the piece becomes not only interesting for you to play not only interesting for anybody else but how stable it will be in your memory so we had a big amount of information everything what i told today comes from my personal experience and from experience of many many of my students um, i encourage you to try it out uh, to choose what you liked more and please share with me your experiences if you tried something out how did you like it how did it work i'm really looking forward for your comments don't forget to press the like button, to share this video with your friends, to subscribe and to press the notification bell. Thank you very much for your attention. If you would like to support me or if you like to learn more, please join our Patreon community. And I say goodbye to you and see you next time.